So I want to recognize that Boone County is here, that Logan County is here, and Mingo County is here, and Kanawha County is here. So if that tells you how important today is and the conversation that we're about to have, I don't know what else is. Um, for those of you all that don't know me, I am the city clerk for the city of Logan. I've been here for... I've been here for 127,000 years. <laughs> I've actually been with the city for 23 years, officially and unofficially, and it's my honor. And um, it's also my honor to stand right beside of you. Small government is the definition of fall down seven times and get us eight. Right? Am I right? Can I commit to that? Cities and our right sheriffs. It isn't easy, but it's because we're meant to do great things and we all have purpose bigger than us. We all have servant hearts. Thank you all for coming today. I told Roger Bryant this is what I wanted to see. Looking out in the front row. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of reasons why we're here, and let's be here to learn together. Um, Decisions like these need to make sense. And ultimately, let's allow every decision that we make here today and in the state of West Virginia be for the direction of God and give us wisdom to do our best to serve our community and our state, always. There's always going to be a challenge. We all know this. I look around the room, I see the mayor of Chapmanville, the mayor of Man, our city council, our senators, our business people, I mean, I can't say enough about everybody in this room, but it's how you handle that challenge, and that's why we're all here, and I hate talking on a microphone. I have to talk with my hands, so I apologize. At the age of nine years old, when I was standing with Gaston Caperton, I never imagined in my life that I would fall in love with municipal government today. It certainly has been a roller coaster. It's blessed me with a room full of people and so many people here today that have paved the way for me and that work to make Southern West Virginia the place we all know that it can be. I have a great deal of respect for every single person in this room. I'm honored to have the governor and his staff here with, his, with us today. You know, a lot of people give the governor the applause and as do I but it's the movers and shakers that you see back here with the video cameras and everybody loading and unloading signs and Jack Basin helping decorate City Hall and all of the things that you don't see that make things go. So thank you for to his staff. I'm honored to have his staff here. Secretary Hardy, I simply can't say enough and I'm Baby Dog's biggest fan. I truly cannot articulate, and I wish he was already here, how proud I am of our Logan boy, Brian Abraham, the governor's chief of staff. I publicly apologize right now in front of everybody for driving him absolutely crazy and have my deepest appreciation and condolences sent to him. I also ne never imagined that my nine-year-old self would be introducing the best human that I've ever met and the best mayor that I've ever seen. He's my friend and the person that makes me want to get up every day and put Logan first, and he makes the definition of success making life better for others. And isn't that what we should all do? That should be the definition of success. It should be making our state, our communities, and the future right here of West Virginia better for our kids. We fight the good fight together, my mayor, Serafina Noletti. <laughs> Man, this is fantastic, Sarah, one in this building today. Simply fantastic. Can't say enough about the attendance of everyone that's here. You know, just like Amber said, we've got representation from hospitals to our county uh, rescue 
911, or Board of Education, have him up a wood trails, or sheriff. That used to be my police chief. <laughs> <laughs> he ran away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, my city council, y'all need to really stand up. Yes. They, they are behind me and our town, everything we do. Well, there, our staff is out. Oh, the she's hallway. out. Okay. I'm out in the hallway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the principal's office. Yes. Oh, uh, Lord. But it's just a fantastic. I know we've got a lot of information here for everyone in this building today. That's why we're all here, is to hear what's going on with these amendments. And, uh, You know, we've got Dave Hardy here, Secretary of Revenue. You know, he's he's been in city government. He was city councilman, city of Charleston. How many years, Dave? Six. Six years. He's, he's been with us. He knows what city government means. He knows what these amendments will do to city government. He's been in the county commission. He was county commissioner. How many years does 16. 16 years. County commissioner. Canal County. He knows. He's been there. He knows what could happen. And he's going to explain to us here, you know, why these amendments are, are so important. Either vote yes or no. He's not going to tell us how to vote. That's left up to the voters. <laughs> oh, boy. But, you know, I was honored. You know, I've been in uh, municipal government, city, city of Logan all my life. I've lived here all my life, born here, had a business here for 80 years. I got involved in, in city government over 20 years ago. Uh, never knew I would even be in government. Didn't have any amb ambitions of, of being in government. But, uh, you know, here I am. And we're going to make this town the best we can, we have, we'll continue. But I'm going to let Dave take over. Dave, it's an honor to have you here with us. Thanks, 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 thanks. There we go. I've learned with these microphones, get them right at the beginning of your speech and you won't mess up. I cannot tell you what a great view it is from this podium up here. To look out here and see all these great West Virginians, first responders here with us today, I am so happy to be here and speak on behalf of the governor. Of course, the governor and baby doll are scheduled to be here in a few minutes. As, as the mayor said, I was on Charleston City Council six years, county commissioner 16. I had the pleasure of serving with Kim all 16 years. And Kim was my mentor. When it came to public safety and understanding how county government worked, I learned so much from Kim. I still learn from him. And one thing that I learned very quickly was local government is the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. Everything we do. When you dial 911, it's not coming from Washington, D.C. It's not coming from Charleston. Down here, it's Logan, right? You dial it up in Charlestown, where we were yesterday, it's coming from Charlestown. So let's just think about this for a few minutes. The governor honored me in January 17th by asking me to come up and serve as Secretary of Revenue. We started the same day, Martin Luther King Day, uh, January 16, 2017. The first financial reports we looked at. State Budget Director handed us the first one. Fiscal year 17, we had five and a half months to go. I said, there's red print on this report. I know what that means. We were $217 million in the hole. First day we got there. 
I said, wow, that's a big deal. They handed us the second report, fiscal year 18, which was going to start July 1st that year, 2017. We were projected to be $497 million in the hole. So when Governor Justice and I joined up there and we started this journey together, we were over $700 million in the hole the day we got there. Now I'm going to fast forward you to this year, June 30th of this year, 2022. The, probably the greatest day in the history of West Virginia's financial foundation. On June 30th of 2022, under the leadership of the man who's going to arrive here in a few minutes, our governor, Jim Justice, we posted a $1,308,000,000 surplus for the people of West Virginia. that type of surplus, everything's got to be working. Everything. People have to be buying things. People have to be paying income tax. And guess what? Our energy businesses are coming up. Our natural gas business, our coal business, they're coming back. And our severance revenue is going up. And we feel better than ever. And guess what? We just finished the first quarter of this fiscal year. We just finished up on September 30th. We're already ahead of last year's pace. That's how well we're doing. So the governor said to us, I'd like to start returning some of these dollars to the people of West Virginia. <clears throat> Dave, get your crew together. And I've got Mark Muco there with me. Mark's got 38 years experience in the Department of Revenue. He said, tell me what you think. We started doing the research. The research was so easy. There are nine states in the United States, nine, that don't have state income tax. Other 41 do, and we're one of those 41. Now, those states are states you'd be familiar with. We all go to them. Florida, Texas, Tennessee, Nevada, Wyoming, South Dakota, Alaska. That's most of the list right there. What we found was those states in the last 10 years have grown at twice the rate of the other 41 states. We also found that their populations have grown twice as fast and their economies have grown 56% faster than the other 41 states. And the governor said, why don't we swing for the fences? Why don't we try and do, let's start eliminating the state income tax in West Virginia. That's a 6.5% tax that comes right out of your wallet every day on every paycheck that you'll ever have. So we looked at that, and then we did a little more research. And guess what we found out? Telework. Teleworkers are not the future of their name. All over the country, you saw it right there in downtown Charleston, where they closed the Caskey headquarters and all the employees of Caskey now, almost all of them, are going to be working from home. And we found that when we survey teleworkers, teleworkers want to move and want to go where taxes are low. That doesn't surprise you, does it? Is anybody surprised by that? We weren't. So what you're seeing all over the United States are teleworkers are looking at states that don't have a state income tax. So this governor said, let's move now. And in July of this year, we proposed to the state legislature, first week of July, a 10% immediate cut in the state income tax for this year, 2022. That one cut, just 10%, would have put $271 million back in all of our pockets statewide. The average West Virginian would have immediately received about $275 in their pocket immediately. That was the first step. The idea is we're going to continue <coughs> year by year and phase this tax out. If we do that, we will be putting back in your pockets $2.7 billion in your pockets as West Virginians. 
Imagine our state with $2.7 billion more in your pocket and people moving in here from all over the country because we don't have a state income tax. But we hit a roadblock. We hit a roadblock in July. The state senate, the House of Delegates passed that in one day, by the way. The state senate wouldn't even put it on the agenda, wouldn't vote on it. Said, don't want to do it, don't want to vote on it because of this right here, Amendment 2. Now, Amendment 2, I'm going to say this as bluntly as I can, is a train wreck. It's a shipwreck for the state's budget and for local government. It is a complete con for local government. And let me tell you why. In 1932, our Constitution was amended that property taxes that you pay, that we pay, right here in Logan or in Charleston, go where? They go to our local governments. They go to a county government and provide the services that we all know we need. They go to our school boards. They go to our cities. That is in the Constitution and has been for 90 years. Don't have to ask the West Virginia legislature for your money. It's in the Constitution. Remember, if it's in the Constitution, it can't be changed without a vote of the people. Well, you're going to get your chance on November 7 because Amendment 2 says we are going to allow the legislature to control where the property taxes are going to go. We're not going to guarantee them to the counties anymore and the cities. We're going to put that money into Charleston and then what are you going to have to do? Every year from now on, after 90 years of having this in our state constitution, you're going to have to rely on the West Virginia legislature. Send your money to Charleston and then ask the legislature to give it back. Every single year. With every single legislature, with every single governor, regardless of how the state's income taxes or how the state's finances are performed. <clears throat> so if you want to get in line, if you want to get in line with the state employees, if you want to get in line with the state's pension issues, if you want to get in line for the PEIA obligations that the state has, if you want to get behind the state employees for your pay raises, then I would say it might be smart for you to vote for Amendment 2. If you want to keep your revenue constitutionally guaranteed right here, right where it comes from, then I would seriously consider voting against Amendment 2. Amendment 2 is a power grab. It's a power grab by the, the legislature to centralize government and take away local control. So the reason why you don't have a $271 million tax cut is because the legislature is holding on the Senate to see if they can fund this Amendment 2. Let me tell you about Amendment 2. I've got a pie chart here somewhere. Amber, do you know where it went? I'm here, gotcha. I'll make it real quick, because I know the, the governor is here ready to roll. <laughs> Amendment 2, we were under the yeah. tax cut on Amendment 2. Where'd it go? I'm coming. It's behind. Okay. Which one we want? The pie chart. <laughs> Delegate Amber said she'd be like Vanna White up here for me. Okay. We'll make okay. it work. I'll make this real simple. The governor's plan, $271 million, 100% of that tax cut goes to West Virginians who work for a living every day. Amendment 2. It's going to cost the people of West Virginia $600 million. The only thing working West Virginians get is you get your car tax reduced. <coughs> well, the average car tax in West Virginia is $200 a car. $200. So for $200 a car, one-third of the money, about $140 million, goes to hard-working West Virginians. The other two-thirds goes to big business. 
And Commissioner Carper mentioned to me a few minutes ago, he's been doing some research in Kanawha County. We're talking Walmart, Kroger, Dow, DuPont. They are going to get two-thirds of the $600 million. Two to one. $271 million versus $140 million. That's why Amendment 2 is a bad idea. And we have been around the state for the last two weeks educating everybody on how insidious Amendment 2 is. It's a handout to big business, and it is not in favor of hardworking West Virginia. So that's all, as Forrest Gump says, that's all I have to say about that. Okay? At this point, I'm going to, I'm going to put this down here. Vanna, thank you so much for your help. And I am going to turn the floor over to the Charleston Gazette calls him the Kanawha County Dymo. Because he's so full of energy. The most energetic public servant that I have ever met and had the pleasure of serving with. My colleague and friend, President of Kanawha County Commission, Ken Carter. I suspect what happened is the governor will come in before I say much, and that's just fine. But you're not here to hear from me. But uh, first of all, President Godley, uh, Commissioner Ellis, Commissioner Barnett, thank you for allowing me to come to your county. It's a pleasure to see you. Senator Phillips, Senator Doc Stallings, and my good friend of over 40 some years, Roger Bryant. It's a privilege to see the first responders. God bless our first responders. <laughs> and people have asked me, why in the world would you go around publicly oppose a tax cut? You'll pay for this with the ballot box. For them, I'll pay for that. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. It's Friday night, coming up 7 o'clock. Where will most of Logan County be? Football field. Oh, oh, where? Oh, where? In Madison. Yeah, we're <laughs> Boone County. Sorry, sorry, Doc. Sorry, Doc. So here's how this, here I want to explain this a new way. You got two teams, right? You got the Wildcats and you got the Scouts. <laughs> okay. You know who the coach of the Skyhawks is going to be, Dave? Amendment 2. Mm -hmm. And you know who the coach of the Wildcats is going to be? Coach Big Jim Justice. <laughs> now, take a look at the Amendment 2 plan. There is no plan. They, they can say all day long they got a plan. They've changed it 30 some times the last day or two. But let me tell you something about uh, this game. The Wildcats, uh, what, you're five and one? Yes, sir. And the other guys are six zip, right? Yes, sir. So who in the world would go to a football game without a real plan? You know, the X's and the O's. Well, Amendment 2 doesn't have O's, it's got zeros. Now, it's really quite that simple. When you really take a look at this, and, and commissioners, you know this better than I do. By the way, I read the Logan Banner proving I have no real life. <laughs> I'll hear about that. That's okay. Here, here's the deal. I do like to read the Logan Banner. I like when they put in there if someone takes to the podium and holds the county commissioner accountable. It's not that much fun, is it, commissioner? I've done it for 26 years. But that's real government. You see when people come in and ask me, where's my water project? You know what I'll tell them in the future? Call Charleston. Uh, first responders, where's my ambulance, Roger? Call Char I don't write the budget, I just, I'm on the check. I'm not going to worry about it. You don't think that'll happen? Now, I believe there's good intentions. I truly believe that. And I understand that there are some truth to the fact that our budgets are going down, property's going down, I understand that. But this was not the correct way, in my judgment, to solve this problem. But let me just make it about as clear as I know how to make it. In Logan County, West Virginia, right where we are today, it's 30%. You take the biggest hit on this than any county in the state. Does anybody disagree with that? Yes, sir. So what's going to happen when there's the eventual downturn in the economy? What's going to, everybody heard of coal having a cyclical situation where they go down every five, six, seven years? My whole life, 
I don't need to come to Logan County and tell you about the coal business, do I? Bart knows it, don't you, Bart? And that's the way it works. So this is a concern. And by the way, this county, Logan County, voted Jim Justice in not once, but twice. Overwhelmingly, correct? You trusted Governor Justice. You've trusted him through the pandemic. We need to listen to him on this issue. Now, reasonable people can differ on reasonable discussions. But I do know this much. There's going to come a time when, if, if this passes, there's going to be issues involving funding. And Secretary Hardy is exactly correct. You'll be in line. Right now, Sheriff, how you doing, Sheriff? I'm doing fine, sorry. Just fine. Good to see you, PD. Let me ask you, Sheriff. You going to enjoy going down to the committee down in Charleston and you need a new police car? No, sir. Right now, you just tell those three. If they don't do what you want them to do, you tell the people of Logan County and they'll hear about it, right? Yes, sir. That is going to change forever. That is important. Uh, Amber, by the way, just what Amber says when I say. Oh, there she is back here. Amber's got it right. Local government is very important. What happened to the philosophy of local control? Local control of our school boards. Local control of our schools. You know, if we don't like the sheriff, we get a new sheriff. Not this sheriff, but some sheriff. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make, under this proposal, and remember this, have you seen the commercials yet? Have you seen the commercials? Roger, are you all running commercials? You don't have any money to run commercials. Fire departments don't have money to run commercials. Sheriff can't run commercials. Who is coming up with this million to a million and a half dollars to tell everyone that this is the best thing that's ever happened to Logan County? Well, the star of the show is here, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, let me uh, sort of paraphrase the governor and I'll close, going back to the football. There's two teams. There's the Skyhawks and there's the Wildcats. And the Wildcats are going to ask you, give me all your points. Give me all your touchdowns. Get, they only want your cheerleaders. And they'll say, don't worry, I promise you, I'll give it back to you. That's Amendment 2 in a nutshell. That's why I oppose it. I've had some opportunity in the last 40 plus years to work with the first responder community. And I think Roger will tell you that we've seen this move before, haven't we? So that's why I think we as West Virginians, you as Logan Countyans, and we've got other counties here too, should respect Governor Jim Justice. You trusted him to run the pandemic. He did a good job, didn't he? He led the nation. He led the nation. <laughs> Governor Justice has, has set record after record after record. So my money's on Governor Jim Justice, the coach. And he'll win the football game Friday night if you let him, I'll guarantee you. Thank you very much. Is the governor here? He's in. Ladies and gentlemen, the 36th governor of the 35th state, the most honorable Jim Justice, our governor.
Listen to me when I tell you just this. Uh, I guess along the way, you know, you elected me as governor and honored me beyond good sense with that. And I would tell you from the bottom of my heart just this, and I mean it. You know, I'm not a politician. I could really give a hoot at the end of the day if you're a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent. I really believe from right day one that so many people on the outside are standing there ready to throw rocks at West Virginia and make fun of West Virginia. They've done it, done it, done it, done it. Well, it's my feeling that we didn't need to throw rocks at one another. We needed to really just perpetuate ourselves. And in doing so, we did it. We really did. It's unbelievable what West Virginia is doing right today. And so with all that being said, I'd say first and foremost, what on God's earth are we trying to do to change the play that's really working? You know, that's the first thing. And right behind all that, all the stuff that I'm sure has already been told to you, whether it be our Secretary of Revenue or Ken or whomever it may be, yeah, they've already told you all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff you already know except one big thing. The people out there, and even a lot of you, maybe you didn't know it before, maybe you know it now, but the people don't know what in the world's about to happen. They don't know. They don't have any idea. They really think, as bizarre as it may be, that Amendment 2 may be about guns. You know, they, they absolutely don't have any idea. It makes perfect sense that vote for this and I'll get rid of my car tax. It makes perfect sense to vote for this and we'll bring more business here, more opportunities here, and I'll get rid of my car tax. You know, so they walk in, they turn out in an off general, off, off general general election mm -hmm. deal is not going to be real high probably, and they just check the box and go on down the road, and they think it's benign, it's, it's not toxic, it's not anything. And at the end of the day, the real deal is just this, and this is all there is to it. When you take control away from you, and, and, and if those dollars don't come back, and there's, I mean, Look, we've all been through the coal business here. We all know how cyclical things are. We are, anybody that runs a household, my God, living, how many times in your household do you think, well, we can get by next, next month or next week on $800 or whatever it may be, and it never, ever works out. I'm going to repair our house, and it's going to cost $2,600, and when you spent $4,000, then you're, uh-oh, what are we going to do? It never, ever works out that simple. So with all that being said, if some level of, you know, forgive me, dupe happens, then all of a sudden we're upside down, and then Charleston, who's taken all of your control, and you've given it to them. My God, live if you've given it to them. Why you would do that, I don't have any idea. And, and not only that, as Charleston has taken your control, then all of a sudden it just happens that just maybe Charleston can't give you the money back. Mm -hmm. Inflation is eating us alive today in every way. And if Charleston can't give you your money back, what happens? Yeah. You've hurt schools. You've hurt your seniors. No. You've hurt job mm -hmm. growth. Three things that they may say, there's no way. All the other ways are real easy. The firemen and policemen and all that's easy. But do you realize that if you have a dysfunctional county because you don't have the money, do you realize nobody's going to want to come? No business? Your seniors are going to get hurt? Absolutely, your school's going to get hurt? Nobody's going to want to come. It only gets worse from this, and I don't know how much you really want to listen to me, but it's only, it only gets worse if you'll step back and just think about it, just simply just this. We've got surplus after surplus after surplus. You've got per se, in fact you do have, Republican majorities. You've got Republican 
uh, government. With all that being said, Republicans are supposed to stand for tax cuts. Republicans are supposed to restore money back to you. That's what we're supposed to do. So I said, well, my kind of living, you know, we got $5 gasoline, and you got groceries and who knows what, and you got a lot of people out there that are hurting. So the very least we can do is let's do a 10% tax cut. Let's get the taxpayers their money back, part of their money. Well, it was $254, $270 million that we could just give back to you tomorrow. Boom. We could get that back right now. Okay? And what happened is the House said, good. Good deal. And the Senate said, we're not even going to vote. And we as a leadership, we're not going to allow our senators to even vote. And you may thought, well, what, what in the world just happened there? I mean, what, what could have possibly happened? Republicans are supposed to be the ones to give your money back and be proud of doing it. Republicans are the ones supposed to be fired up about local control and not, you know, Washington control. You know, what just happened there? You know, and why? Well, here's the why, like it or not like it, but this is the why. And that's all there's to it is they got to have all the money. They got to have all the money to be able to do their program because their program, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, is the inventory and machinery tax. And they want to take it away. Now, when they take it away, then those taxes don't flow to you. They really don't flow to anybody because they're gone. And the only way you can get the money back for your services because it's big time, big time. The only way in the world you're going to get the money back is Charleston's going to have to come through. <clears throat> and the thing you're going to have to bet on over and over and over happening is growth. You're just going to say, well, growth's just going to happen. Well, God bless a milk cow. Guys, I mean, <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way all the time. And if it doesn't happen and we have a blip in the screw on the screen, then you've got a problem. But it's worse than that. And the reason it's worse than that is just this. I'm a real believer that I'd bet my life on this. I'd bet nobody's even seen in here what they want to do. Has anybody seen the plan? Okay. All right, now just think about it. If you haven't seen the plan, why on God's earth would you go vote to have all your rights gone and give them the keys to them, we'll see. Why would you do such a thing? And you know why? Because they decided to hook with it the car tax. And they're telling you, you do this and you won't have to pay a car tax. Well, isn't there a simpler way in the world if what we really wanted in life was to get rid of the car tax to be able to figure a way to rebate your money back or do something to get rid of your car tax. But they don't give a hoot about the car tax. The car tax is the hook to get y'all sunk. That's all there's to it. And you say, well, why? And, and here's, the, here's the total answer. I don't care what anybody says. Total answer. First of all, when leadership decides something in the Senate, the senators line up like a bunch of full sheep and just automatic stamp, automatic. Well, that's why we don't have a vote. That's exactly why we don't have a vote. The next thing is just this. Would Jim Justice be for getting rid of the machinery and inventory tax? Of course I would. I'd be for getting rid of anything and everything if we could afford to do it. <laughs> but first and foremost, Jim Justice believes that you should get the benefit because you have brought us to the dance. You should personally get the benefit before big corporations get it. Just think, think, who in this room is going to benefit from getting the machinery and, and, and the inventory tax gone more than anybody? It's me. It's me. Do you realize 
how much it would mean to me to have the machinery and inventory tax gone? Millions. And I'm the one telling you, don't do it. <coughs> don't do it. Now, I've tried to compromise, tried to talk, tried to do everything in the world, and you can't get even any response at all. None. Zero. Zero. And so all I can do is just this. I can come and tell you what I think and try to explain to you and give you real knowledge. Now, you can have those, whether it be senators, whomever they may be, stand up, and defend the leadership and say, and say, well, by God, this will bring industry and stuff to us. Well, look, first of all, just ask yourself. I mean, you know, since this little guy here and this little dog walked in the door, have we not brought industry and industry and goodness and goodness and surplus and everything under the sun? And this guy is telling you to God above, it's serious business when I say that. I have yet to hear the first industry, the first person of, of industry say to me, I will come to West Virginia only if you get rid of the machinery and inventory taxes. Zero. Zero. So, if you've got Bertha Hathaway coming, coming, and you've got Nucor coming, and you've got Green Power, and You've got, my gosh, who knows what else, pure watercraft, everything in the world going on. And lots, lots, lots more to come. And they never even ask about it. Why are we shoving that in the front of you? And then just ask yourself, just simply just this. And that is, we don't have that chart up here. Which one? I never, no, no. Well... Just hold up just one time. That's okay. Just so. Are you sure? I'm positive. Yeah, I'm <laughs> good. Small room, but we have it. If, if we were to do this, if we were to get rid of your car tax and get rid of the machinery and inventory tax, how much do you benefit versus corporations and many times big corporations that are from out of state and who knows who in the world they are? You benefit 30% and big corporations benefit 70% or they're close to it. Here's what it is. Right there is what it is. You benefit that from the car tax. They benefit this from the machinery and inventory tax. And that's what it is. Right there. You hold it up. <laughs> Don't want to block baby. Well, that's all right. We'll put it back. <laughs> okay. If we had done exactly, it was very infancy. If we had just done exactly what I was talking about, 10% of your income tax. But we can do so much more than that. You don't need to stop it there. We can do so much more than that. Now, just think about this. If you can find a mechanism, and we can, we can to get rid of your car tax, if that, if you're hell-bent on that, we'll find a way to do that. And the second thing is that then you can give, give a percentage of your income tax back. <laughs> Come on, man. It's all right. Come on. Right, here's Nathan. i got to have some help here, Nathan. That's all right. She's, she'll be fine in just a second. <coughs> okay. If we could find a way to get rid of your car tax and cut back on your uh, uh, cut your income tax, whatever the percentage may be, you'll get 100% of it. And the county will still be in complete control. Now look, this is, this is silly. This is plain silly. At the end of the day, if we were really smart as West Virginians today, we would sit down in a room, and you know, I'm not bragging on myself, but tenfold in that capital, I've got more business experience than tenfold is there. And they ran around everywhere in the world for a year going to county commissioners and school boards and everything else, and never one time even asked me. Nothing. Zero. Now they say they want to debate. You know, are you kidding me? 
All I'm here to do is just tell you what I know is just fact. You may say, well, why? Why has this happened? What's the definition of the swamp in D.C.? Think about it. Why? What is the swamp? The swamp is this. The swamp is you have legislatures that are approached by special interest lobbyists. And they give them money. And then they promise them they're going to support them in their election to be or whatever it may be. And then they buy their vote. Now you say what you want, but that is exactly the definition of the swamp. To where their vote that you elected them for, their vote just gets gone away because some special interest is either handing money, promise putting money in their, in their campaign fund, or promising them their support in the election to be, whatever it may be. Governor, i got to stop you right there for a second. No disrespect. First of all, I know industry has reached out to me and asked me to support this. So okay, I, I, as, I, as listen, listen, okay. You don't, you, we don't need to debate. I know. Maybe listen, you know, I, 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 love, I love Governor, you. I love you. I know you love West Virginia. But the bottom line, why don't you call the bluff of the Senate Make a special session next week and tell Senator Blair to put it on the on the call list. Oh my His choice. Let's get it. Let's get what we Ruby, want Ruby. before the people and let the people decide. Ruby. Because all the Amendment Two does is allow us to go in and look at. And you talk about the, the your vehicle tax. Yeah, yeah, we can't do that without Amendment Two. Ruby, Ruby, listen, there is a way to do that. This man, I promise, you'll tell you how the way to do that. Now, Ruby, I mean, I can't help if you don't know, but I know. I know. And I, and I absolutely, and I love you to death. You know that. You know that. But, uh, but I am absolutely dead splitting the bullseye that Blair won't begin to negotiate anything with anybody. He has said it 14 times. But, Governor, we just gave Warren Buffett $50 million, one of the richest men in the world. We just gave him $50 million to come here and put some green stuff in there. That's a slap in the face of the coal ministry. Ruby. No, That's no, why no. I was the sole no vote. Warren Buffett. $50 million. Well, I'm not going to, I, I, I'm not going to debate with you over 50,000 things. Ruby, I know this. I know this. When I walked in the door, this state was dead level bankrupt. And, this, and right now, this state, this town, this community is doing better and better and better and better. I'm not going to tell you it's perfect, but I'm going to tell you just this, that we, what we did with Bertha Hathaway is just absolutely this. They said, the only way they can come is this. Now, we can stand on the sideline and we can and we can get nothing done in many situations. The only way they're going to come is this. But we now, give everything to the new companies. What about the existing companies? No. The little mom and pop. What are we doing for them? Tax, tax, tax. Okay. No, no. Now, come on. Ruby, good Lord. We, end up, we do everything for... Yeah, for now, I mean, that sounds great, Ruby, but my Lord, I know better. There's no, we don't need to talk about it. I mean, we don't need to talk about it. I mean, it's absolutely silly in my book. We've done everything in the world for business in West Virginia, and we're going to continue to do more and more and more. This is all about one thing. This ain't about little mom and pops. This is really about giving Jim Justice $10 million. This is about Alpha. This is about Arch. This is about who knows what the Dow Chemical. This is about on and on and on and on. Even Nucle, you know, it, it, this, this is about companies that you just don't have one earthly clue about, <coughs> you know. Now, I believe, I believe this. Here's exactly what I believe. And I believe, and this is exactly what, I mean, how in the world? You know, I was the one years ago that said, let's get rid of the machinery inventory tax. I was the one that said to do it and everything. Well, why would I have changed my mind today? And the reason, and I haven't really, I've said just move it to the back of the bus. You know, what I think we need to do today is how in the world can we turn to somebody that's getting their dinner bucket every day and say, you don't get any tax break right now. We're going to give the tax break over here to Alpha, or we're going to give the tax break to Dow Chemical. Governor, someone making $43,000, $46,000 a year, they're only going to see $18 a month. Now, now, listen, 
Eighteen dollars a month may be nothing, maybe to, to maybe to rent or to lower income. Don't make it. The retirees make zero one. Uh, uh, whoa, 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 just whoa, stop, just one second. Let's just think one more step. What I want to do is get us on a pathway to eliminate your income tax in entirety. And then it ain't eighteen dollars a month, is it, bro? And I'll, even though you know, I'll introduce the bill to eliminate every bit of it as soon as it affects from passage this coming session. Well, let me tell you, you can't get rid of all of it just like that. But one thing you can do is you can get on a significant pathway. Now let's just think about this just a second. You know, if we want to, if we want to debate this just one sec, how much is the machinery inventory tax going to be with just a little teeny bit of twist here and there? Well, it's probably going to be, according to this man here, this man over here, probably going to be $500 million. Okay? You could take $500 million and you could add almost another 20% to your income tax reduction. You could do your car tax and then put you at 22% instead of 10%. You get rid of your car tax. And for the guy that's making $43,000 or whatever you just said just a minute ago, he's going to put in his pocket, I don't know, 400 bucks, 400 more dollars, maybe 500 And then you go one step more and one step more, but the net of the whole thing is I just don't get how in the world the companies that are thriving in West Virginia and companies that want to come to West Virginia that never mention the machine and inventory thing, I don't see how we can give them ungodly tax breaks and bet on build a field and they'll come and absolutely ignore the guy that's making the $43,000. But you had Alpha and all these other companies that either scrapped or parked the quit <laughs> or Alpha oh, shipped it to, oh, to the oh, depot in Wise, Virginia. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Now, come on, come on. My God, women. You know, Governor, I was on the tax reform back in 15 and 16. I think it was somewhere one year was uh, inventory or equipment tax was collected, 134, 136 million. Out of that, it was 94, 96 million coming from the mining industry. Right, and I love that. Why? Okay. Someone told me up in Eastern Panhandle some printing presses, the EDA owns them, so they avoid the uh, equipment tax, but the company reaps all the benefits. They pay the lease to the EDA. What's that good to the mining industry? Is the EDA, EDA going to. Uh, Finance a triple seven or a 1415 minor? Probably not. Exactly. But, but Rupert, just listen to me. <coughs> listen, listen to me just about this. Because I know. I mean, do our mining companies need to be making more money today? Well, you don't know what the current administration, oh. I mean, they said it, I, I, I go, no, but I you got to look, question. not everybody is making $600 a, a ton. I just made, I just Alabama's made. making 600 on a few spot markets. Okay, I just asked the question. But contracts are contracts if they're right. 100, look at, 100. Look at the earnings of these companies. Look at the earnings. It's high time for the guy that's making $43,000 to get a break. Now, Ruby, I now agree. Listen, my, my family is in the mining business, and they've been in the mining business forever. I would tell you that when I came along, I said, you know, I was told by Bob Murray, who had the biggest mining company, period. I was told by Bob, Bob Murray, here's my tearing on the sales tax. Here's my tearing on the sales tax. Now, i got to show you something. And I'll, I'll, let me see if I... If I got anything to write, let me have that. It's, let me have that board right there. There's a tab. Where's that? It's Secretary Where? Hardy. Right down there. Jay. It's there behind you, okay. under the window. And I hate like crazy that we're <clears throat> we're even remotely talking about all this stuff. But let's let's just let me just show you how ridiculous, how totally ridiculous that what we're talking about really is. Bob Murray, Bob Murray was the biggest steam coal operator in the state of West Virginia. And he mined 30 million tons of coal. And literally Bob Murray controlled the Coal Association. Now my dad was one of the very founders of the Coal Association and I was the president of the Surface Mining Reclamation Association. 
I mean, you're talking about somebody that owes their life to coal. I said, tear the severance tax on coal and oil and gas on my first day of state. Bob Murray came to me and he said, I gotta have a couple of rabbits. And I said, Bob, I'll do anything. His coal was $32. That's what he was selling his coal for. He was paying 5% severance tax. He wanted a 2% reduction in his severance tax. And I said, Bob, I'll do everything in our power to help do that and everything. But in my state of the state, I said, I want to tier the severance tax, meaning if it goes up, that we as operators and owners pay a little bit more, throw a little bit more in the collection plan. And you talk about the absolute biggest, biggest miss in the history of the state of West Virginia, and it will go down in that forevermore. The worst thing the legislature of the state of West Virginia ever did, ever did in their life, Bob Murray said, can I give you what I think the tiering should be? The biggest coal operator in the state. And here's what he said. At $74, Sarah's tax is 10%. Now that's exact on his stationery. And I can give the media that at any point in time, anywhere. <clears throat> that's exactly what he said. But Governor, we no, no, no. But I'm but talking, how Ruby. Be against the other Listen, states. I'm talking. Then I'll, I'll, I'll Can follow. You please, just, okay. just settle, just a minute. He said seventy-four dollars and above seventy-four dollars is ten percent. Now, right now, he's paying, or they, he, his severance tax would be three percent. Right here is ten percent. What's the price of thermal coal? Two hundred bucks. It's two hundred dollars. Now let's just think about this just a second. It's two hundred dollars. Under this scenario, Bob Murray would be paying twenty dollars, twenty dollars a ton, at this scenario in severance tax every month, every ton he mine. Under the scenario we have today, he's paying six dollars. The difference, the difference in the two, now listen, I know this like the blue in the back of my hand. It will go down as the worst mistake in the history of the state of West Virginia that was made. The difference in 20 minus 6 is what he's paying is $14. More money that would be coming to, what, to, to the state of West Virginia. We mined 80 million tons of steam coal in a year. That's a billion, a hundred million dollars more, more into the state of West Virginia today every single year that it lasts. And that's not all. That's not all. Met coal would equal about 60% of that. Uh, so in other words, about another 600 million. And that ain't all. Gas went from a dollar to nine dollars, nine times. But now gas is six dollars and eighty cents. And gas would almost equal what this and that coal would do put, be put together. And what if I'm half wrong? It would have been half of the entire revenue of the state of West Virginia. And what could we have done with that? And literally, literally, that will go down as the biggest screw-up of all blooming time, I'm not done, okay. by the legislature. And I am here to tell you we don't want to tack on number two. My dad would have told me a thousand times. He would have said, son, and I ran a lot of bulldozers. He would have said, son, it's okay to be working really hard and get a bulldog D10 hung up. But son, whatever you do, you better damn well not get another D10 to pull that one out and get them both hung up. 
He would have told me that. He told me that a thousand times. We already hung the one D10 up. And that's, that's long, 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 long gone. And this is not taking one, I mean, one swipe at any coal company in the land. My God, I live it. I love them all. I owe everything to them. Everything in the world. They provide us employment. They provide us everything under the sun. This is not taking a swipe at all. But what I believe is this. I believe you reach thresholds when when's enough profit enough. And literally, literally, if you don't think that our coal companies today are bathing in money, then I've got great, great, great land, oceanfront in Kansas that I'll sell. Because without any question, they're doing phenomenal. And I love it. I love it. All I'm here to tell you is just this. Today, if you're going to the grocery store, you're buying gas, we need to help you. So there's to it. That's all I'm telling you. And on top of that, if you give up your control of your county to Charleston, you're out of your blooming mind. Because Ruby may not be there. Well, that's my problem, Ruby. If, we're run, if I'm running for county commission, what's used to me to run if you were to turn well, somebody over to the legislature? Well, first of all, I don't think you can get in everything. I will say this. This evening at 6 o'clock at South Charleston Holiday Inn and all that in my next week meeting, I'll be there and Senator Tarr will be there speaking to this to Amendment 2 and the bill that Tarr has come up with. Anybody's more than welcome to come. But, but Governor, my question to you. Your family has mining in Virginia and Kentucky, correct? Absolutely. What's the cost severance there? It's less. So you're how much less? In Virginia, I think it's one percent. Okay, so now you're telling me we're going to compete. Our metallurgical coal is going to compete at ten percent with you. If you'd got your tier, we'd have to compete ten percent to one percent. You know yourself being in. You said it all your life, and a lot of respect to you on your mining side. But you know a quarter can make a change on a, on a big contract. Ruth, listen, listen. So we can't compete with Virginia and Kentucky if we go to a tiered severance. Now, I told you a minute ago I love you, didn't I? And I love you, Governor. Okay. Now, but, but I, am, I am here to tell you just this. This is crazy talk. This is talk that you've heard so much and everything and you believe it. The bot, and I just listened to it on the crazy talk. If I'm selling cornflakes against the guy in Virginia, and we're both selling cornflakes, and we're selling for a dollar a box, and our cost is 95 cents a box, then that's really tough, tough, it? okay? But the only way that I'm going to ask our people to pay more is if cornflakes go to $100 a box. If they go to $100 a box and you say, well, you know, if I go up a quarter, we can't compete because Virginia's paying less. And that's garbage. That's total garbage. You know, at the end of the day, if coal prices are $200 or they're $250 a ton, bull crap. The only thing you've got to compete with is you just got to just ship the coal. So we're going in special session next week? So we're going to what? We're going to do special session. Of course, we're not going to do special session. We're not Governor, going to do let's, session. let's get the bill out there before the people. The, Dave, you can come and testify. Mark, the, you can come and testify to committee. I mean, the reason we're I'm not going to special session, the doc is. Listen, we've been in special session, haven't we? But not this on the call. No, we we went to special session with a simple <coughs> session. We we'll just give people ten percent of their money back. But so Governor, good to me, I looked at that was your ploy to try to kill. Or ever who's feeding your ears, that's a ploy to kill them. You know what we want to do with with inventory and equipment, and and the vehicle tax. Well, listen, brother. I don't do ploy, and I don't do. I'm not. I'm not one that's going to play the political game, and I'm not going to just go tell you a bunch of junk and everything. All I'm going to tell you is just simply just this. We need to be helping our people. And, and literally, as Republicans, we're both that, and as Republicans, Republicans are supposed to be in favor of local stuff versus state stuff. State stuff instead of government, instead of Washington stuff. <laughs> Republicans are supposed to, supposed to stand with the working everyday people. 
I like it or not like it, but I'll promise you, and it's a drop of a hat, if Donald Trump was standing right there, he'd say, you better do what Jim's saying to do. And I'll promise you, if Ronald Reagan was standing right there, even though he fought back and forth with the, with the you know, the members of his own party, he would say, you better do what Jim's telling you. And Jim's telling you exactly what we should do. And what we should do is, you shouldn't give up your local control A. We should find a mechanism to be able to get rid of your car tax, and we can. And the other thing, what we should do is get the state on a pathway to get rid of your personal income tax, because if we did, you would drive more people to this state than you can shake a stick at. The last thing I tell you is just this. I was standing on the mountaintop pleading with us to get rid of the right to work law, or get, or get a right to work law. Pleading we needed to get a right to work law. Now, we did. And in all honesty, we got rid of prevailing wage at the same time. And we did. And you know what we did? We knew, we knew right then all kinds of growth would happen, just boom. And you know what we did? We turned around and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And we waited a year and we turned around and nothing happened. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden, along came Jim Justice. And things started really falling in place. A lot of the same people voted 122 to no to one for the road bond. 122 to one. They voted against the road, road to Prosperity program. At the end of the day, like it or not like it, but Jim's been right. And the last of my last, I would tell you is just this. Just think how simple it would be for me. How simple would it be? You know, all I have to do is ride the wave to the end. I'm going to be done in two years. I cut every ribbon, come to every celebration, bring baby dog who's snoozing now, <laughs> have something to do everything under the entire sun. And I would ride off into the sunset, the greatest of the greatest of the greatest of all time. Surpluses from bankruptcy to everything coming or going. And I'm here to tell you, that's not me. The only reason I'm here is you. And I mean it when I tell you I love you. I know Rupi loves you too. And I think the blooming world of Rupi and everything, but in this situation, to me, what's going on is just special interests and things that are going on that absolutely are leaving you high and dry. And I'm going to keep telling you that. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, one of the two things is going to happen. Either Amendment 2 is going to pass, and you're going to give all the control to Charleston and go on down the road, or it's not. And if it does pass, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk up to you just as respectfully as I possibly can. I'm going to ride the wave to the end. And when the wave's over, I'll see you at Walmart. And when I see you at Walmart I'll, Walmart, I'll look right at you and say, I told you so. Because it will absolutely destroy you. Ruby may not be there. I won't be there. So many will come and go, it's unbelievable. Without any question whatsoever, I've just shown you right here the magnitude of the monies that could be coming into our state, and what would you have done with that money? For God's sake of living, you could have made a baby dog, baby dog boulevard and put gold nuggets in it all through Logan and all over Logan. You could have. Do you not realize you could have? This could have very well approached the entire revenue of the state of West Virginia. All of it. I mean, it is unthinkable what a miss. I'm just telling you just this. Last of my last of my last. I think Ruby and I will agree 100,000% on this. If you could close your eyes and you could open your eyes back up and you could say, our Personal income tax is gone. 
do, do we not really, how many people do you think would come? What would happen to our schools and what would happen to our seniors and what would happen to all of us? How many people and opportunities and businesses, for God's sakes, are living? I mean, you don't live in a blooming cave. You see what's going on in Tennessee and everywhere else under the sun. And all the population of this country has got to drive through us to get there. You know, this isn't for us. What I'm talking about is for them. And that's all we should focus on. For them. And if we screw this up, don't look for me in Walmart, because I'll be looking for you. I'll really, I'll be looking for you. That's all there is to it. Absolutely, Ruby, with all in me, here's exactly, if we had good sense, we should get away from Amendment 2 right now. We should find a way to get rid of the car tax because people would like to have that. And we should turn right around and make this commitment that we should all sit in a room and try with all in us to get, find a mechanism to get rid of as much of our personal income tax as we could get rid of and get us on a pathway to where the world knows West Virginia is open for real business and they're on their way to getting rid of the personal income tax. And then, then when we spun around a couple of times, and we had real more growth coming, then at that point in time, turn and get rid of your machinery inventory tax. I would be a million percent in that camp. The say the thing, and I'll end with just this. When I thought, get rid of your person, you know, machinery and inventory tax, I never would have thunk in a million years that we could have really done and got rid of our personal income tax. I never believed it. West Virginia, with no personal income tax. Are you kidding me? West Virginia, like Texas or Florida or Tennessee, there's no way. Not little West Virginia, not then. We didn't have a pot to pee in at that time. You know, now it's really changed. And now you have real surpluses, big surpluses and everything. On top of all that, at that time, I never would have believed that I'd said in a discussion with Berkshire Hathaway or Newcorp or Green Power or all the other companies that we're talking to right now, and none of them, none of them say, you know, you need rid of that machine and inventory tax. But I know those things now. I know now we can bring all kinds of companies here without going that way. And I know right now that we've got an opportunity with surpluses and all the stuff to really, really move the needle as far as your personal income tax. And I really believe and know this. For that person, no matter if you, <coughs> sir, or you, sir, or you, every last one of you made this happen. You helped me pull the rope in the pandemic, and you've, you've done it and done it and done it. And we owe you. Alpha's doing good enough. And Ruby may say, well, you know, they need to be competitive with Virginia and everything else. And that's a tagline. It sounds great, but it doesn't mean doodly. The price is $250. And if Alpha can produce the coal for 70, they make enough money to fill this room 14,000 times a day. And I'm not giving Alpha a hard time, but I'm telling you, Jim Justice's company's the same way, and on and on and on. We need to take care of you, and you, and you. And then, if we still are right side up and really cooking, I'd be, I'd be the guy running through the streets with the banner, get rid of your machine with inventory tax. And the last thing is, I would tell you, you know, on Lafayette a long time ago, don't take this personally, but they had a thing called a dumb bunny. And literally, if you give up your control to Ruby, or to Jim Justice, or to anybody in Charleston that may be there or may not be there, if you give up that control, you're dumb bunnies. You don't need to do that. You don't really need to do that at all. And the only way that you do it is let them buy your votes. Let them say we're going to get rid of car tax. I'm telling you, without any question in me, the first move I'll make and I promise you to God above, and I've never told you anything but the truth, the first move I'll make is to get rid of your car tax. Now, let's get on with life. Has anybody else got any questions?
Uh, are you talk about you only have two years left. Are you worried that, you know, if Amendment 2 is defeated in your opposition, are you worried that this is going to stall any other legislative work you want to do? Well, I hope to goodness that we're bigger than that. You know, I am. You know, but, but um, let, me, let me just, just say just this. How important is it for those kids that we could possibly get rid of our personal income tax? If you do this and you can write it down and etch it in stone to God above, we will drive a stake in that heart forevermore. That's all there's to it. That'll be gone. That'll be long gone. And there's even a plan circulating around right now. And just think about this for a second. There's a plan going around right now. It says, tell you what, we'll give her a car tax, we'll give her a machine and inventory tax, and we'll do 10% on the income tax. Now we're up to a billion dollars. Where are the surplus is going to go? They're going to go right out the window. What's going to happen if things turn a little bit sour? What's going to happen? You're going to absolutely stand there twiddling your thumbs. You're not going to have any idea what to do. Is there anything more important? Is there anything? You know, I'm telling you, you hired me to mind the store. And for God's sakes of living, as far as government employees, they've gone down. As far as keeping almost a flat budget, we've almost done that. But you can't guarantee yourself just because Eric Tarr says we're going to have a flat budget. I mean, give me that sheet of paper. Okay. Now give me the sheet of paper on the flat budget. Now look at this. This is the this is the number of employees in West Virginia since I walked in the door. This is where we are now. This is what's happened. Now look at this. Here's the last proposal from, from Chairman Tarr. Not giving him a hard time, he's a good guy. He's proposing that in 23, 24, 25, and 26, every single year, your budget in the state of West Virginia is identical. $4,645,000,000. Every year. Can you run your house that way? Can you? I mean, can you? And then, and then you know what they'd say is this. They'd say, well, if we have something we've got to spend money on, I mean, Lord and mercy, there's stuff all the time. What if PEI P -E goes up? I mean, what, or, or what if we get the funky PEI and we got a fund? What do we do about pay raises? What are we going to do about the pension plans if Biden, which is a complete lunatic, you know, <laughs> a lunatic, you know, and everything, on a good day, what are we going to do if the stock market goes to 9,000? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with your rate holders? What are you going to do with rainy day funds? What are you going to do? I mean, I mean, but somebody's got to mind the store. Do you, honest to God, think that it's going to, we can just keep it flat all the way across and assume this much growth and we'll for sure send the money back to you? It's a horrendous risk. It is. It just plain is. And you can either believe me or not believe me, but I'm telling you, that's why I said do happens and it happens all the time. You know, and when it happens, you got to pivot and you got to adjust. Now, I also said just this, and then I am done. <laughs> when I walked in the door, all those miraculous things that I loved, the right to work law, get rid of prevailing wage, stuff like that, that I loved, you know. All of a sudden, we turned around and weren't working, and here's these ungodly deficits. Ungodly. And, and many people felt like, well, what, what we can do is government's wasteful, we'll just cut. And every time you do something, it sounds real good on the soapbox until it becomes crunch time. And when it becomes crunch time, and you know you're going to really take services away or hurt somebody, then you find out that very many people want to do it. But I told everybody just this, that the more you cut, the more people left West Virginia. And the more you cut, the longer you drug that hole right with you. 
the hole never left because more people left, their tax dollars left, and you kept dragging the hole. And you had to have something a lot different. Don't like it or not like it. I brought that. I brought that. I brought every one of those ideas. Go back and just ask yourself, the powers to be that are trying to tell you this, what ideas have they brought to the table? What did they do? I can list them a mile long, what I brought you. Now, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, if you don't think Duke can happen, it can sure happen, and I'll end by just saying, Baby Dog was in the governor's office the other day, and literally sitting as close as y'all are to me, there's a couch in front of my desk. You know? And then there's chairs, and there's about eight people in the room. And she was right over behind my desk, and I could tell something was up, but I didn't really know what it was. And she walked right over in front of those people, right in front of my desk, and pooped her right on the floor. <laughs> so I know, and she knows too, Duke just plain happens. <laughs> man, I think the world of you. I always say He's a good man. He's a little bit misguided right now, but he's a good man. <laughs> Kevin, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, I really have enjoyed this. This is the first time I've ever sat in. I'm not an office holder, just a senior citizen group. And when I come in, I asked Commissioner Danny. I said, Danny, I said, uh, I don't really understand this. I said, uh, what, what's your opinion on it? Give me some guidance. And I talked to Roger Brown about it, too. I can bear in, in uh, 2008, I had open heart surgery, and this gentleman, uh, they interviewed on the national news. He, uh, he said, I'm 75. I worked all my life with polo and I lost my 401k because it went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. He said, at the end of the month, there's not enough money to go around to pay the bills. And he said, if I live 10 more years, I'll probably have to go back to work. I've been a senior citizen, my wife, fit in that category. We've been eating up. You hear about the utilities going up. $18 on a bill, and they're going to be $204 a month. I paid two bills yesterday, one for the telephone, which is nothing elaborate, and a power bill of $350. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing $1,500 a month. And by the time I pay, the utilities is almost $800,000 a month. And I was listening to syndicated news the other day, and it, it was just about health care. Uh, Tony Creedy on Senate News, he said, you know, he said, after the administration of Governor Justice goes out, he says, those of you that are on PEIA, you mentioned that, said you should be concerned about it because there's going to be a lot of changes. And I told my wife, Betty, I said, Betty, I said, I don't know what we're going to do. If that goes up, we've got to have health care and we can't afford it. So uh, I'm sitting here listening to you, and first thing I heard about the amendment the uh, vote no. They said they're going to uh, cut your uh, personal property tax on your automobile. I thought, man, that's what I need. I'm a senior citizen. Sure. In Logan County, I don't know about the others, but a huge percentage of the people are senior citizens on checks. A lot of them are shut-ins, don't even get out. And this body, you've just explained it real well in your administration. I, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've never been to one. But the general public you can talk a lot all day long, but they're not getting the message. They don't know. But I guarantee you when they hear that you're going to get your income tax taken away and the taxes on your personal property or whatever it may be, they're going to vote up despite everything, and then you're going to be defeated on it. I, I, I pray and hope that uh, somehow the senior citizens, the people of Logan County, the state of West Virginia, and I want to say this one other thing, too. I was on this council. It's been 20 years ago, spent 10 years here, and the Governor Arch Moore was governor at that time. And they was always in battle with the Democrats because they were highly Democratic uh, county, Logan was. Arch was Republican, and he'd come and get a lot of opposition and ended up losing Logan and Mingo. And he got so aggravated with him, he said he spent many terms in the governorship. He said, I I'm not worried about Logan and Mingo anymore because as long as I can get from Charleston North get the votes, I've got to make it. Sure enough, that's what would take place. And that's what you're saying. If this thing goes through like you told us, and our money is decided in Charleston at the Capitol, Logan Mingo's going to suffer a lot of other places besides 
uh, your utilities and all things like that. Uh, when I used to work, I'd drive from Logan to Bluefield. It was a deserted area, and it was like black damp after you left uh, McDowell County, come through out of Mercer to McDowell, Wyoming into Logan. Never been going to through Gilbert. Those towns were ghost towns. And you see Logan and, and Domingo now downtown. What used to be a fabric, uh, vibrant place to come to live, shop, the buildings are empty. We, uh, Amber and the mayor and the administration are being commended. They have really put out the effort to try to hold what we've got and build it up and check to all around the communities. And we'll be admired, but the, the sound and everything is not getting out to the senior citizens, which are, like you said, are the ones that are really getting hurt. And I know these, your power bill, gas at the pumps, you, uh, you, uh, water bills, all of them, and they're having to do it because they're been squeezed and can't make it either, and they're trying to get this. Logan County, and the mayor of Pro 5 is, has probably got one, they're the nine uh, throughout the United States of America, the lowest rate on water rates in the United States, and Logan's listed number nine. They haven't raised it over years, but now they've got to get so hard with expenses on supplies, materials, labor, that I'm really concerned about it when you tell us, like, you know, I think you did a great job presenting it to us. And if I would have uh, hadn't heard this, I would have probably went out and, and voted for it because that's what you said about the taxes cutting off. I need help in, the, sure. in my pocketbook. Sure. And I, a lot of percentage all through the state of West Virginia does. And I'm not wanting to make it a debate or anything, but uh, I worry about when I heard it about the PEI special because I really have had a lot of cancer, heart, uh, surgeon, a lot of other issues. I need my health care real bad. And my wife does. We're up in years. But uh, what's going to happen when justice goes out? Governor Justice. It worries me about that. Because Tony Craig, I was listening to him, he said, it's PA, it's going to be out of sight. Well, if you can get him to, to change it or put up a constitutional amendment, I'll run again. <laughs> 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 I promise you I'll run again. <laughs> uh, I, I, let, me, let me just say this, sister. You know, I. I admire you and I would have admired you just as much either way you know if you just said no I, I'm, I'm really I'm gonna vote for this and everything because you know I, I know you and both of you are wonderful people and, and that's really good I can tell you that, that I'm really 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 proud that we've kept the EIA and the health you know your premiums and everything just constant all the way through my administration and then for all the way through the whole time and we're going to keep it that way all the way till I run, so I'm done. Okay. Yeah. It is just another thing, like I said, about the do that can happen, and it's stuff is going to happen. It's just going to happen. And and this 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 idea, the problem, so many of our legislatures believed that this was the way to go. It seemed benign. It didn't seem to have to have any toxicity. Well, now. It's got real life toxicity because all we really, really, really are doing with Amendment 2 is trying to find a way to get the machinery and inventory tax gone. And, and if we do that, you know, then I think if we have any blips on the screen, we'll have an impossible time getting rid of your personal income tax. We may be able to get rid of your car thing and the machinery and inventory thing at the same time. But I know, I know that there's a mechanism, this man knows that there's a mechanism to get rid of your tar car tax gone, and then in addition to that, give you a real bump in your income tax. And on top of that, if you're not paying income tax, structure a way like we did before to give people tax rebates that aren't even paying income tax. There's so many things we can do but we've got our eyes shut because we're trying to cater to special interests. That's what we're doing. My good Lord of living, and we don't like being referred to as the swamp, but what on God's earth, and I'll stay away from Charleston, because Rupi's, you know, looking real good now, but if I stay away from Charleston, what on God's earth do you think Washington does every day? They don't care about the people. They don't care about the states. 
They care about getting reelected. That's what's going on. I mean, or the next highest office. That's all it is about. Well, it is not about that to me. You see, I decided to do this, and you honored me, and at the end of the day, God be my ever-loving witness. Our forefathers served. They gave up everything they had. Many of them lost their farms or their businesses. They gave everything they had to make this country what we are. I believe God above made me Jim Justice for a reason. And who you are for a reason. And all of y'all for a reason. And it's not to be here to get something for me. And that's the problem with what's going on in our government. If we don't watch out, don't think that we can't sink ourselves. And it would be a hell of a bad day. That's all there is to it. I'm done. God bless you. Thank you.